Here's a fun problem dealing with the number too big to imagine. We have to find the number of zeros at the end of 100 factorial. Now, 100 factorial, as you probably know, is 100 times 99 times 98 and so on all the way down to 1. Now, anytime there's a factor of 10 in this number, that's going to contribute to a zero at the end of the final product. So what we have to do is figure out how many factors of 10 are in the number. In order to do that, we're going to count the factors of two that are in this factorial and match them up with the factors of five. However many two five pairs we have, that will be the number of zeros at the end of the number. So that's the plan. We'll count factors of two and five because each pair is a factor of 10, thus contributing an additional zero to the end of 100 factorial. Let's begin by counting the factors of five. So we'll list off all these numbers that have one factor of five. These are numbers that of course are in 100 factorial, so that's why we're counting them. And right now we're just counting the ones that have one factor of five, which means we're skipping multiples of 25 because those have two factors of five each. Thus, our list looks something like this, 5, 10, 15, 20, 30, 35, 40, and so on, counting all the way up for 16 total factors of 5 accounted for in this list of numbers. And again, we're counting these because these all appear in the product that is 100 factorial, and each of these contributes one factor of five. Then let's go back and count the multiples of 25. That gives us 25, 50, 75, and 100. These are all in the product that defines 100 factorial, and each of these gives us two more factors of five. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight more factors. We don't have to count numbers that are multiples of 5 cubed because those are not present in this product. 5 cubed is 125, that's obviously too big. So in total, we have 24 factors of 5. Now, we could count factors of 2 in the exact same way. We could start by counting the numbers that have one factor of 2. So 2, 6, 10, 14, and so on. We'd skip the multiples of 4 because those have two factors of 2, and that would give us 25 total numbers with one factor of 2 in the product that defines 100 factorial. There is actually a quicker way to complete this procedure, though. We could take 100 and divide it by 2. This is going to give us 50. That means if we were to do this list, but not skip any powers of 2, just go 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, all the way up to 100, we would have a list of 50 numbers. But some of those numbers in the list, like 4 or 16, would have additional factors of 2. We can actually count those by taking 50 and dividing that by 2. If we do that, we get 25, and that means that there would be 25 numbers in a list with at least two factors of two. That's four, eight, 12, 16, 20, and so on, all the way up to 100. But some of those numbers, like eight, 16, and 32, would still have more factors of two in them. And we can count those by taking 25 and dividing by two. That gives us 12, with of course a remainder of one. We're not concerned with the remainder though. This means if we were to list numbers with three factors of two, up to 100, there would be 12 such numbers, 8, 16, 24, 32, and so on. Some of the numbers in that list, though, might have additional factors of 2. We count those by taking 12 and dividing by 2, and this gives us 6. So if we were to list the numbers with 4 factors of 2, up to 100, there would be 6 such numbers. And then we divide that by 2 to see if there are any remaining factors of 2. Yes, there are 3 more. And then we can divide that by 2 to get 1 with a remainder of 1. So the grand total for the number of factors of 2 is found by just adding up these whole parts. 50 plus 25 plus 12 plus 6 plus 3 plus 1. That totals to 97 factors of 2. 
just to clear up one detail here that might be confusing, when we were listing the numbers that had two factors of five, we counted each one as two factors. But that's because we hadn't counted them at all in the previous list. This method we're using for two is a little bit different. Like I said, when we do 25 divided by two here in our third step, we're counting the numbers from one to 100 that have at least three factors of two in them. So then why is that just contributing 12 rather than 36? The reason is because we counted their additional factors of two in the previous steps. This first step, for example, already counted eight once, but eight has more than one factor of two. This second step counted eight a second time, but eight has more than two factors of two. This third step counted eight a third and final time, accounting for all three factors of two that it has. Regardless, we didn't really need to count all of these up. We just needed to see if we have at least 24 factors of two, because that's the maximum number that we can pair with factors of five to form factors of 10 that are present in 10 factorial. So because there are 24 factors of five in 100 factorial, and there are 97 factors of two, we can pair all 24 factors of five up with a factor of two, giving us 24 factors of 10. And thus, 100 factorial must end with 24 zeros. But just to make it clear, that doesn't mean that 100 factorial is somewhere around 10 to the 24. It just ends with 24 zeros, but it has a bunch of other digits before those 24 zeros. 100 factorial is way bigger than 10 to the 24. In fact, 100 factorial is about 9.3 times 10 to the 157. It's absolutely massive. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions or your own solution for this fun little problem. And check my playlist out in the description for more interesting math problems. Thanks for watching. Uh, uh, I'm the math Mathematical menace, the machinations of mankind Two calculators at the same time Hand signs and abacus, finger count and calculus I'm the V to the T, my parameter, the rapidest Happens like this, my lectures, the most prominent Dominant, call me the Morgan, I get the compliments The union in together like any time that we intersect